today I'm going to introduce the views module to all of you. How many people have used Drupal 6 yet? Okay. So I'm assuming you guys have installed views for Drupal 6? No? Maybe. Okay. So the views module essentially allows you to create new lists of content, users, or taxonomy terms anywhere on your site, um, whether it's a block uh, somewhere or a page. Um, so what I've done here is this is a very basic setup of a website. Uh, I installed Drupal 6 and I installed, um, let's see, the admin menu module which is the black bar across the top that you'll see when I navigate through the site. Um, the advanced help module which uh, integrates with views to give you help uh, throughout the interface along with views. The CCK module to extend uh, node types to allow different fields. Um, CVS Deploy and Drush were used to install all the modules. So if we have time at the end, I know we're supposed to do an intro on Drush. I figured I could show a little bit of that at the end or maybe through the presentation and we could take questions on that later. Um, the Devel module uh, is a developer module. It allows you to develop things. Well, it's just a helper for developers, basically. You can empty the, the site cache and do a multitude of other things. Question? Okay. Um, File field, image API, image field, those are all needed so that I can add photos to a CCK node type. And you'll see the, the examples I'm going to give here are um, a photo gallery. So we're going to build a couple different types of photo galleries using the views module and CCK. Uh, image cache is going to allow us to resize the photos that we upload uh, dynamically. And I'll integrate that as after we build our views. But like, are you using the new CCK that just got released for G6? Um, it's the version 2.1, 2.2, yeah. Um, and then token is more of a, a helper module for other modules. And uh, obviously the views module. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. Basically all I have is a, a new content type called photo. And let's see, let's look at the fields I put there. Uh, I added a taxonomy vocabulary to it, and I'll go over that after this. But essentially all I did was add a new field called field underscore photo that is of a type image. Okay, so a very basic setup. There's, there's really nothing else on this website. Um, I'll go into the taxonomy now. And I have two, two vocabularies, and the main one being the LA Drupal Gallery. So what I did is I created a new gallery uh, vocabulary for all of our uh, photo galleries that we're going to have on our website. Okay, and so I'll look at the terms I have available. Uh, I added Drupal Camp LA 2007, 2008, Random Photos, and Scale 6, which is the Southern California Linux Expo that um, our group participated in last year. So each one of those is a taxonomy term, which is in turn going to be a photo gallery on our website. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Okay. I also added the tags vocabulary um, as a way to sort of just tag things uh, site-wide. Not, it's not really important, I just kind of added it there. Um, yeah. So let's see. Now if you go to the homepage, you'll see I have already uploaded some photos to the website. Um, so each one has a title and a photo. Okay. And you can see from some of the categories that are there uh, what they're categorized under. Okay, and let me actually go to the, one of these pages and edit it so you can see um, what I entered in the content, just as an example. Okay, so I'm sure you're all familiar with the screen. Essentially there's a title, um, I categorized this photo node, uh, and I uploaded a photo. Additionally, I enabled the um, title text for each of the photos. And um, if you haven't seen any of this stuff, I can go over it later after I get to the view stuff. But basically the image field allows you to attach a title to each of the photos that you upload. Um, and this is important because later if we use Thickbox, which will pop the images up, it uses that title text as the, dis the description underneath it. So I, we can get into that a little bit later. Um, I didn't add any body text. Uh, we might not even actually have to view this full node page uh, because if we use something like Thickbox, we can just click on the photo and it shows us a large version of it. Um, okay. So let's see. Okay, so now we want to create a 
a way to browse through these photos in sort of a photo gallery esque way, a photo gallery view way. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a new view. Okay, so site building views. Um, you'll notice by default, and sorry, I haven't really walked through this yet. Um, this is the the default like administration page for views. You can see that it already comes with some views um, by default that it will allow you to use, um, which we can go over that a little bit later. But I want to show you how to create a view first. Okay, um, so let's add a new view. Uh, we're going to call this our gallery view, and it's going to be so here we have different node uh, view types, right? So you see um, user, term, node revision. Uh, the new, new views to module allows you to create lists of objects other than just nodes. So you can create a view that lists all of the comments on the website, or a view that lists all of the nodes on the website, or a view that lists all the users on the website. Um, so for this one, we have photos, which are all nodes. And so we're going to create a node um, view type. Okay. So this is the new administration screen for views 2. And it's probably really confusing at first, because there's a lot of buttons, and it's really small. And um, it's not anything like views 1. So before we get into all of this, does anyone know what a view is? Mike. <laughs> okay. Uh, a view. Uh, you, want, you want to answer, Carrie? Views is basically uh, a uh, SQL generator that generates a query to pull up a page that has the information you're looking for. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's basically a query generating tool. It's a lot like others, only it works in groups. All right, so Carrie said uh, Views is basically a SQL query generator, which it is. Um, but for anyone that's new to anything about computing, uh, basically what Views allows you to do is <laughs> creates lists of content on your site. Um, in this case, now we can add lists of users or lists of taxonomy terms, etc. And uh, by default, when you create a node view type like we're doing right now, it's going to return all of the nodes that we have on our site. Okay, and what we can do now is we can go in here and we can add filters so that we only see uh, nodes that are like the type <coughs> photo. Okay, so if I save this, right, I update this. Um, this view is now only going to return nodes on our website that are the photo nodes. Okay, so adding filters to this view allows us to limit what sort of results we get back um, of all the content that's on our website. Okay, so what I can show you a quick preview here. Um, let me see. It's really cool because Views 2 allows you to, it shows you a preview of what your results will be uh, based on the filters that you're adding and all of the arguments and such. So we'll go through here now. Um, okay, so here's the live preview. Uh, it shows us all of the nodes that are on our website um, that are photos. Okay, wait, what did you just press to make that red box go away? Right. Okay, okay so. Sorry. No, good, good question. By default, um, Hey, let's step through each of these settings before I get to that. Okay. So, let's see. The basic settings here are you can name it, which doesn't really matter much other than it gets a name right here. Okay. And you can add multiple multiple displays for each view, and I'll, I'll get to that. But this name field only r relates to this this value right here, and you don't have to worry about that. Um, the title would be like the title that shows up above right here above the listing of the nodes. Okay, so I'm going to change this title really quick here. Okay, it didn't show up on the live preview, but it will show up if we set it anywhere else on the website. There will be a title above all of these nodes, okay, that says our view. Okay, um, style, 
let's see. So with the style, you can basically manipulate the way that each of these results is returned back. Okay. So unformatted is there's no formatting on each of the results. If we went to something like list and I update it, you can see how each of the results now has like a list item style next to it. Okay, does that make sense? So um, I can get into more of these afterwards uh, about which one, what each one is, but um, for now I can only introduce this stuff. Uh, now you can do a row style. So what I did was I changed the row style from fields to node. Okay, and when I did that, I'm basically telling it that each of the results, I wanted to do the full node view or a teaser view of each node that, is result, that comes back as part of our results. Okay, so if I change this to fields, I can select which node fields I want to display in our view. Okay, so I'm going to change that. And I'm going to change it and I'm going to add the title of each node so that all we get from our result is the title of the node. Okay, and it's probably a little confusing, but as you see this stuff, you'll, it'll start to make sense. Okay. Wait one. I'll, I'll go back over that. But do you see how I changed the row style now so it only shows fields from each node? And I've added a field for it to display, and that's the node title. Okay, now down here you can see the title of each of the nodes is displayed. Okay. Does this sort of make sense to you about like what generally what a view is? Is anyone, is anyone confused about what a view is or what it's going to allow us to do on the website? Okay, everyone's good? Okay. Um, so let's step back for a second. So the main difference with, if you're looking comparing this to view one would be that the, uh, the style plus the row style would sort of combined into that one drop down box where you selected what type of view you want to create. Uh, right. And so you could either create list view or you could create table view or you could create another view. Right. So the question is, like, what's the main difference here between like the style outputs for views one and views two? Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that with views two, we can create multiple pages per view or multiple blocks per view. Whereas if you've used views one before, you can only create each view only has a single page and a single block associated with it, and they actually share a lot of the same settings. Okay, if views two that's completely different. You can. You can add multiple pages and multiple blocks for each view. And if you're if you understand programming at all, there's a concept called inheritance, where um, like for object-oriented people here, uh, basically what you're going to do is you set a lot of your default settings in the default view, and then you can add new page views or block views that will inherit those defaults. Okay, and I, we'll get into this as we build our views for for later. Um, so. I mean, you can see I can add new displays, so I can add a block display, right? I'll add another block display, okay? So what this does is it built, this single view is now providing our website with two new blocks that we can place anywhere on our site, okay? Um, now, going back to what Mike said, each of these views now, we can set different row styles, whereas previously, um, like in views one, you could set a row style to fields or list view, right? But then each of the fields, the fields that you set are the same for both the block and the page view. Whereas for views two, you can set different fields for the block and different fields for the, the page view. Okay. Um, that probably only makes sense if you're really familiar with views one. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So I'm not going to save that. Let me see. Okay, so let's see. I probably should have done a mock-up to show you what kind of thing we're going to create, but um, let me introduce uh, filters really quick because that's sort of an important concept. Um, earlier we, we said that when you build a new view, you get a list of every single piece of content on your website. And the way that you limit that is through filters. Okay, so by default, there's no filters, okay? Which basically means if we're going to filter out the people in this room, you know, our view of everybody in this room would be everybody, okay? There's no filters yet, okay? Now, if we add a filter so that we only want people on the left side of the room, 
then we'd add a new filter and get the people on the side of the room. Okay, so it's a way to sort of like segment pieces, like segment your nodes or your users into groups and then display those on the website. Okay. Um, so I added a node type equals to photo filter, so that only photos are resulting in our view, which makes sense because we're building a photo gallery. I'm also going to add another filter to make sure that we're only showing them published nodes. Okay, so add that. And I'm making sure that each of the nodes is published. Okay. And nothing changes because all of our nodes, all the nodes on this website are published. Okay. Let me save this. Another really important thing about views too is that since there's a lot of Ajax requests going on, none of your data is actually saved regarding the view until you hit the save button. So you save often and frequently. Um, and okay, so what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna add a new piece of content that's not a photo and is published called page. Just to show you guys how that works. So I have a new page node on my website called sample. And if I go back to our views, the view that I created, which is gallery, Okay, and if I remove this node type restriction, you can see that my title sample is done here. Okay, so that node's getting returned. Let me go back and allow it to be only photo. Let's save it. Actually, I could have just hit preview, but I hit save um, just because of habit. Um, let's hit preview now. And you can see that that node is gone. Okay. So it's a very basic example of limiting your results by using the filters. Okay. It's really helpful and handy. Um, the other thing to notice is that each of the filters is anded. So we're only showing nodes that are photo nodes and are published. Okay. So if we if we change this published to not published. Our view is not going to have any nodes, okay? Because all of the nodes on our website are published nodes, okay? Is anybody lost? I have a curiosity about what you were saying earlier. Um, when you set up a view, then when your default then you don't start to set any settings that would be specific for one of the pages. You would do you always have like the default settings and then when you create a page based on the settings, you're going to create a new display? Right, so Mike asked, Mike asked if uh, my defaults contain settings that I use for specific pages or blocks. Um, normally what I do is I, I'll try to reuse a lot of my views. So if I have a particular content type that I'm going to be displaying throughout the site, like, like videos, say, uh, I may have like five different ways I want to output the videos but I'll create one view called videos, right? And I'll set the, the filter for the default to published and type equals video, right? And then what I'll do from there is I'll add different displays over here. You know, I'll add new block displays or page displays that I can actually add additional filters to on top of the defaults, okay? So if I want a filter to get only videos that are promoted to front page, I can create a new block. So let's do that. So let's have, we have our default right here, and we have our block right here. So I'm going to add another filter for our block, which says that I only want to see nodes. See, just taking back a step, sorry. Um, so when I add filters, you can filter based on any number of variables, I guess you'd say. Um, and the whole list is, is shown down here. But for convenience, uh, you can actually filter them out. So I only want node-related filters or uh, taxonomy-related filters, et cetera, okay? Um, so I'm gonna add a node filter. Let's see here, I'm gonna add a, I'll add a taxonomy filter, that's good. Um, and I only want, I wanna filter out by the taxonomy term ID. So I only wanna list, for this particular block, in, like photo nodes that are in a particular taxonomy that we have set up, which would be one of our photo galleries, okay? And I'll hit add. And now you can see, we can choose which vocabulary 
and let's see. Okay, so we can see which vocabulary we're going to select from and hit update. And then it gives us a list of the taxonomy terms within that vocabulary that we can filter by. Uh, we can multiple select or we can single select. Um, the operator is useful as well if you want to say I only want photo nodes that are not part of Drupal Camp LA 2008. You can say is none of. Um, is all of means that the, the node has to be in every single one of those taxonomy terms, okay, which means you have to specifically set each node to be as part of the random gallery, Drupal Camp LA 2008, and Drupal Camp 2007 galleries. So all three of those have to be required, like a taxonomy term for that node. Um, not something you'll usually use, but can be very helpful if you need it. Um, reduce duplicates. You may have to play with that sometimes when you join on taxonomy terms. Uh, you might get multiple results of the same result. So if you, if you have an issue with that, uh, check back and click on Reduce Duplicates, and it will do its best to um, limit the result set to only unique nodes. Okay. So let's choose the operator as is one of, and we're going to say we only want nodes that are part of Drupal Camp LA 2008. Okay, update our default display. Oops, sorry. Um, so this is where we get into the inheritance and the overriding that Mike was kind of talking about here. So I accidentally clicked update default display. By default, each of the filters, every time you add a new filter, field, or anything else on the screen, it's going to ask you if you want to update the default display, or there's a link up here to override it. Okay, so what I can do here is I can override the default, and then I can always revert back to the default by clicking use default. Okay, and then I can hit update. Okay, so if I go back here, I can remove this. What was, what was that button exposed? Um, I, can, I can get to that. If you've used exposed filters in views one, it's similar to views two. Um, and we'll get there, but basically it allows you to expose filters to the end user so that they can select for themselves which taxonomy terms, or if we want to add cool Ajax dynamic search, we can allow users to now search and then get results through an Ajax request. It's pretty cool. Um, so we go back to block. So it's always important to keep your eye on which display you're working on. Um, and I usually title or use this name field now to you know name my displays so I know what I'm, I'm actually working with when I see it. Okay. So that's where it does come in handy. So this is um, photos from. Right. Okay. Let's see. And I'm gonna hit. I'm going to go down here, and when you do the live preview, you can select which of your displays you want to use. And I'm going to just do this and click on preview. Okay, so now you can see I have three different nodes that are listed in my results because I filtered out only the nodes that are part of that specific taxonomy term. Okay. Go I pretty much get it. Um, could you kind of just quickly go back to the beginning and mm -hmm. show people how to uh, uh, set up uh, the CCK taxonomy? Uh, oh, right, C uh, CCK field? Yeah, and, uh, and uh, um, a category and taxonomy. Okay. Um, In other words, you know, you're, you're uh, installing image and image catch and Right. Those things and everything, you're creating a photo node. And right. So forth. I just want to wonder if everybody. Oh, um, I, don't, I don't think I have time right now, but I can do that later on. If, if you want, I can go through with you. Um, yes, okay. Right. Uh, so, okay, so moving on. Um, so now you guys can see what filters will do, It'll allow you to basically filter out nodes. Um, let's go back. Uh, now, another option here is sort criteria. So we can change the way that these nodes are sorted when they are brought back into our result set. And we can add multiple sort factors. Um, so let's add a new sorting criteria to sort these nodes. And we're going to choose node. Um, I'm going to sort it by the date that they're posted. So the most recent ones are brought to the top. Okay, does that make sense? And if we want to, we can additionally add the sticky as well so that nodes that are sticky on top will always be brought to the top. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and add both of those. This is another cool interface feature for views too that you'll see that you can select multiple sort arguments or filters or, or uh, fields, whatever it is, at the same time. Whereas in views one, you had to manually edit, add each one and let the page refresh. So let's add both of these. Uh, our sort order for the post date. Uh, and let's go ahead and let's override this so that only this particular display, which is our block, will have this sort order applied to it. Okay, so let's override that. If you were to use the normal updates, would you get prompted? Were you saying you get prompted to use the overrides? Or um, you'll see on the next one I do. You'll see it'll instead of saying update, it'll say update default. Okay. You'll see the button, the text on the button change. So right here will change. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to sort descending since the post date uh, gets larger as it's more recent. So we want to use the descending sort. Okay. Um, any questions about that? Is that clear? Everybody knows what ascending and descending sorting is. Okay. And we can change the granularity if you want to, but we'll just use second. Um, let's see. Okay. So if I go back to sticky, this is not overridden. Wait, this is overridden. Okay, these are both over and I'll show that later afterwards. Um, so if we go back to sticky, we want to choose sticky descending because if sticky is true, then it's one, and if it's not, then it's zero. So we want the largest values on top, which means that it's sticky. It's kind of confusing, but that's just how it is. Um, so I'll update that. And the way that sorting works is that it will sort the first one, the first and It sorts by post date, and if there's anything that has the same post date, it will sort that by sticky. Okay, so if we have five nodes, and two of which were created on the same date, and the other three were created on the same date, that sticky sort only applies to the first two, and then for the, f the last three. Okay, so it's just like if you sort alphabetically, where you find all the A's first, and then you sort the second letter by its letter. And then, does that, does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So what we want to do then is we want to move sticky to the first one because we first want to filter or sort by all the nodes that are sticky to the top. And then after that, we want to so, uh, sort them by when they're created. Okay. So in order to do that, we can use this little icon right here. Click on that, and it allows us to rearrange the order. And this is true for filters, sort criteria, fields, arguments, and relationships. They all have the same icon here, and it all does the same thing. Okay, so we're going to change that to that and hit update. Okay. Um, so does everybody understand how sorting works? Okay. Let's go ahead and man, uh, rearrange these fields so that we actually get the photo instead of just the title of the photo. Or, yeah, the title of that node, okay? So here in our fields, because we've selected the row style to be fields, right? we can change this so we, we can remove the field title. Um, and we'll click Remove. And then I'll go ahead, in this red arrow down here, says that there, you've set the set the display defaults to use fields, but there are no fields defined. So that was the red box that I got earlier. Let me define it. Um, so I'm going to add a new field. Okay, and I'm going to choose content, which is this category is from CCK, and it basically allows you to choose any of the CCK fields you have defined. Okay, so click content, and here's our field photo. And I'm going to click add. Okay. Um, so let's go over this field settings really quick, or kind of go through this. Uh, it allows us to exclude from display, so you might be asking yourself, why would I add this field but exclude it from the display? And a good reason for this would be if you're theming something later on in the theme layer, in like a template, fo a template file or a theme function, you can, um, you can make it so that views will return this variable for you, and you can use it in your theme function instead of views outputting it to the screen. Okay, so it's more for if you're getting into theming stuff, you need an extra variable available to you. You can grab that variable from views and have it hide it so it's not, not shown. Okay, um, we can choose that this field will link, we'll, it'll make itself a link to the actual node itself. So we'll go ahead and click that for now because if you click on the photo, it's going to take you to the full, full photo view. Good. Can you show how um, 
shows up in the theme? Uh, we can go over theming if we can get to it, yeah. When you say exclude from display, mm -hmm. does that also exclude it from a known teaser display? If that's the way that you have that display. Right, so that option only comes in if you're using the fields display. Yeah, if you're doing um, the node display, it actually just uses the node templates, just as if uh, it were you know, Drupal core were loading stuff. Um, so I'm going to link this field to its node. And I'm not going to give it a label because it's a photo. We don't need labels on our photos. Um, but what we could do is uh, we could show a label above it, um, which would be the widget label, which we've set in our CCK options to say photo. Or we can add a custom label of whatever we wanted. So. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'll use that, and then I'll come back and I'll rechange that, change stuff, and we can preview the display, and you can see what the difference is. Um, the format is uh, allows you to choose if it's an image, a linked image. Um, when we install image cache later on, we can actually choose which image ca image cache preset to run the photo through, so we can actually resize our photos. Okay, so I'll use image for now. And you can see, um, sorry, I clicked it. It said update default display instead of update just update, which meant that we're using a default um, field, basically. That'll apply to the default um, display. Okay, so we're previewing the photos from DrupalCon 2008, which is this block display that we created. Okay. Um, we're using the list style output. We're displaying different fields, uh, the, uh, specific fields for each node in our result set which we've set over here to display the content, um, the photo content, okay? And if we go down to the preview, you can see um, here's our label that we set, and then here's the field, the photo field from each of the views, each of the nodes in our result. Okay, does that make sense to everybody so far? I'm gonna go back here to our fields. I'm gonna click on this field, and it's gonna allow me to edit the settings for that field. And I'm gonna change the label to none and I'm going to update the default display. And now you can see that there's no label. Okay. So now that we have the photos for that specific taxonomy term, um, we can kind of play with the, the output to, to see what these variables mean. Um, so we can start playing with this stuff. So here uh, we did the list style. If we actually go ahead and choose grid, it'll allow us to um, choose a number of columns, so it'll output it in a grid just like we would usually want for a photo gallery. Um, for this one, I'll do two columns just because the photos are really wide, they're not really resized yet. And horizontal and vertical, uh, essentially, if you can read this, it, I don't know if you can read that. Basically, from horizontal, it just it says the first node is the top left, the second node is next to it, third node is next to it there. If it's vertical, it's um, down and then over. Okay, so vertical is really helpful if you're doing lists of like titles or lists of taxonomy terms because when you read, you'll read alphabetically down and across as opposed to across and down. Okay, so that's something to consider if you're building lists of, um, like I said, like taxonomy terms or just lists of nodes. It makes it a lot easier for, for people to read. So let's update the default display and now you can see I have a grid output. Yeah, so really, really easy to use, um, really cool. So now, let's go back to our defaults and see that, okay, so let's see what's different now. So remember in our default, we didn't set a filter for the taxonomy term. So let's go ahead and preview our default and see what we have. Oops. We still had the published equals false um, set as our filter. So here now we have photos from each of our nodes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save this, and I'm gonna place that block somewhere on the site so we can take a look at it throughout the rest of, see how Views creates that block for for us to use later. Um, so I'll save that. And I'm gonna go to my block configuration. And now we have an extra block available to us called gallery. Okay, and I'm gonna put it on the header of each page. So, yeah. 
It's not very helpful, but you guys get the idea there. Um, you can change it to the footer, actually, if you want. Okay, so that's really cool. So let's go back to our view. Um, does anybody have any questions so far about things I've gone over, maybe too quick? Or, okay. All right. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to install image cache so that we can resize those photos so they actually fit on our page. Okay. Uh, who here has not used image cache before? Okay, so I'll go over a little bit slower. Um, so I'm going to choose site building modules, go to the modules page. So you can see that I have Image API and Image API GD2. For most of your worries, you're going to use the GD2 library because that's what's usually installed with PHP. Um, Image Magic is a little more advanced, and usually you only have that. Uh, certain certain hosts will provide that, but not a lot. Most hosts will provide you with GD2. Okay, um, and then I'm going to install the Image Cache module, and then the user interface for Image Cache. Uh, the reason some some of the more some of the bigger modules are starting to do that, where they'll split their user interface away from their actual module. Um, the reason for that is that, like image cache and views and some other modules will have like a way that you can actually set those the the set the settings through code. So you don't actually need to use the, the interface to build those. You can use it through code. So for what you guys are mostly going to be using, install the user interface module as well as the regular module. Um, with what do you mean built in? Drupal six, like you don't have to go and check these. Stuff. You do, you do. Yeah, and I have these listed as contributed modules on my blog page. Yeah, so I listed the core modules which you don't have to download, and then the contributed ones that you do. Yeah, and I'll go over how to use Drush later, and that makes it really quick. So, um, so go ahead and install those two modules. <coughs> Okay, and now under site building, we have a new option for image cache. Okay, so what image cache allows you to do is to essentially create multiple sizes of the same photo so that you can use them anywhere throughout your site. So for those nodes that we created so far, I only uploaded one photo to them. Now using image cache, I can set different like scalings or croppings so that when I want to display those photos somewhere else in the site, Image Cache will automatically resize those for me and crop them for me so that it fits in the area that I want it to be. Okay, so I'm going to create a new preset. I'm going to call this thumbnail, which is very, very generic. Okay, and there's a lot of actions here, and it might be a little confusing, but you're probably only, only going to need a couple, okay? Um, scale is when you scale it and it re retains its aspect ratio, which means it doesn't get lopsided and funky. Okay, so we're just going to scale our photos. Um, we're going to scale our photos down to, you can do percentage or, or pixels. So I, I like using pixels because I usually use fixed width websites and I need a specific width. Um, so I'm going to set this to uh, 150. And it assumes if there's no percent sign that it's a pixel setting, okay? Uh, and what you can do is you can set a height setting or you can leave it blank, okay? If I leave it blank, it's going to resize my photo to 150 pixels wide, and it doesn't matter how tall it is. It'll just scale it to fit the width, okay? If I set a height as well to 150, it'll set whichever is constrained first. So if it's a really tall photo, it'll set the height to 150, and then the width might be like 20. Right, but if it's a really wide photo, it might be 150 wide and you know 20 tall. So that's how that works. So I'm going to add this action. And I can, you can add additional actions as well. For now, we're just going to use the scale, very basic. Um, and adding other actions later, you may need to recite, uh, reorganize them so that certain actions happen first. Uh, like usually if you do a crop, you'll want to scale it and then crop it because otherwise you'll crop and you'll get like just the center 100 pixels of the photo, which becomes basically useless. Unless you like that style, I don't know. Um, and I'm going to update the preset just to save it. And now if I go back into views, I'll go to our gallery view. 
and I'll click on our field. So we go here and go to the field. And our format allows us to use the thumbnail image. Okay. So we can do thumbnail image link to node. And let's go ahead and update the default display. So there you go. And let's save. And then you'll see the block below will change to that width. Now, uh, image cache, does it create those new files yeah. somewhere, or? Right, so the question is how image cache does what it does. Um, and they're linkable. You put that on linked enough. Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So everybody else knows that it's clickable versus clickable. Right, so if I hover this, it's clickable. If I go back to the field settings, and I, if I uncheck that, a, let's see. I set here, thumbnail. There. It will no longer link to the node. So, there. Okay. Um, so, the question about image cache is how it works is it basically has its own folder structure underneath your, your files um, folder. And it sets a new folder for each of the presets with the preset name. And if it doesn't find a photo that's in that, if it doesn't find the photo it needs in that folder, it creates it on the fly and then it will keep it there. So it, it caches the photo that's resized. Um, you can clear that cache if you want to. It will automatically clear the cache if you change any settings to that particular preset. So say I went back to this preset now and I changed it the width to 150. It's automatically going to flush all those images out and then anytime I go and view one of those photos with that preset, it will see that they're not there anymore and it recreates them based on those settings. Okay. Um, so let's go up here to our grid style and let's change this to four. Um, and you can see it, when I click on, style, uh, on grid, it gives me the options again. Uh, that's because this one actually allows me to configure that. I sometimes have problems with that and I remember I have to click there. Um, so the little cog on the right just means that's the settings page for that particular setting instead of changing the actual uh, view style. Okay, so I'm going to click there, change the columns to four, and I'll update it. And now we can, you can see that. So let's see. Let's take a look at our defaults now. Click preview. You can see that it's four wide. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and save this. Okay, now I'm going to go over some additional like basic settings uh, before we get into any more of the advanced stuff. Um, so here you can see um, there's a setting called Use Ajax. For what we're doing, we don't need to use any Ajax unless we're adding a pager. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do that. I'll, I'll add Ajax. So this view is going to use Ajax requests when it updates any of the items that get returned. Okay, so hit Update, and we're going to tell it that we want to use a pager. And is everybody here familiar with pagers? Does anybody here not know what a pager is? Okay. So a pager is when you uh, have like 10 results and you click page 2 or page 3 to see the third. Right, pagination, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, we can tell we want a full pager, which lists every single page available to click on, or a mini pager, which only gives us like page 1, 2, 3, and then next, and then like the last one. Right, so there's different ways to do that, or we can turn the pager off completely. Um, pager element you usually won't need to worry about, um, but you can read the description text and if you're having issues with the pagers working, try changing the pager element number so that it doesn't get confused which pager is being clicked. It's mostly if you have like four pagers on the same page, um, so Drupal knows which one is being clicked on. So we'll use the full pager and the items per page is sort of correlated with the pager. Um, this limits our, our number of results. Okay, so we're going to limit the number of results to two, and our offset is going to be zero. I'll come back to offset. It's kind of a really cool tool that you can use to create some cool stuff. So I'll leave it at zero for now, which basically means that we're starting from the zeroth item that's returned as part of our results. So it's basically the first item, but in programming, zero is the first element. Okay, so now you can see I have a pager. And you can see that it's updated using Ajax. 
Any questions about what I just went over? I have a question. Yeah. If you are using a pager, do you have to use Ajax? No, you don't. And what's the difference? The page will actually do a full reload. Uh, right. right. Yes, yeah, so the Ajax uh, interfacing is, is all new as well. Yeah. So. In theory, if you do use Ajax, it will be great if it's not working for you. It, so, it will, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so the pager will work just like a non Ajax pager if for some reason. Right, so the question I guess would be, uh, does the Ajax interfacing uh, degrade if the user's not using JavaScript? The answer is yes. When you're using the views module, it, it will degrade gracefully, unless you've hacked away the theme and ruined everything. <laughs> um, in which case, you should know what you're doing anyways. Um, okay, cool. So then there's additionally a more link that we can say create more link. Um, just like in views one, you can have a link at the bottom of your result set that says more. So basically linking it to the, the full node view or something like that. Um, I'll hit update and you can see. Um, I don't really use this a lot. Do you use the more link and pager at the same time? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. Probably not. It's something you can play around with though. But like sometimes for more, I'll just create my own link to a separate page view or something like that in the footer or the header of the view. Um, I've had problems with more links, so sometimes I just add a footer and then I just... Right. Know, right. That's, yeah, that's what I was saying too. I'll like create my own link to, to go to more because a lot of times you'll want to go to a specific page that's not necessarily this view page or something like that. So. Or, or more specific display pages. Right. It may be a panels page that contains that view that you want them to go to. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that right now actually. So I'll turn this off. Um, distinct, once again, this is sort of like what we saw earlier with the filter where we could limit the results, uh, reduce duplicates. Um, this will do something similar. It warns you that if you use this and you don't need it, it'll slow down your queries a little bit. Um, so only use it if you, you know, if you really need to, if you're getting multiple results for the same actual like node element. Okay. Um, access, you can control access now by role or by permission. Um, so let's do that. So. Now you can see that you can limit access to the view by any of the permissions available on the site instead of just by which role the user is a part of. And you can do this on a default for every single display for this view, or you can do it on a per display basis. So if you want some blocks to be available only to logged in users and some blocks only to be available to everybody, then you can, you can modify that. Um, that uses all the inheritance that we talked about earlier. Okay, let's see, expanded form in block. Okay, so, or sorry, exposed form in block. We didn't go over the exposed filters yet, but we will in a bit. Uh, what this allows you to do is anything that's exposed, you can actually, those, those forms can be put into a block and displayed anywhere else on your site. So they don't, you know, the user doesn't have to be at that particular view page to uh, like filter results. And if they, you know, they fill out the form, it'll take them to the view page. So we can, we can show that in a little bit. We'll, we'll create a search for only our photos later on. We'll expose that and do that. Um, and then the header and the footer, you can choose now if you want to display the header if there's no results. Previously in views one, if there's no results, the header never got shown. Um, and you can choose the input format. So we can choose uh, these are our photos. And we'll update that. And that's part of our header. Is, is, this, um, like, is that another item that um, affects show performance if it's not being actually used? Like a um, if you like, if you add a header to your view, um, I mean, obviously, since you're adding more data, it theoretically will slow down your site, but yeah. it's really negligible, really. So. Not like making the query more complex. I mean, I think you can see the query. Right. So down here, if you're if you're concerned, you can you can actually copy this query, um, go into PHP MyAdmin or your SQL administrator, um, and type explain in that query, and it'll actually you can run a MySQL explain on it. Basically, it's very transparent on what is actually being run. Whereas in Views One, you never really knew what was being uh, ran. Get distinct, say, select distinct, and then right, right. 
And right. At your point, when you run this thing, the, the, the database actually has to run the query a couple of times to figure out if things are distinct. Right. So it creates a temporary table and then rescans it to make sure that everything is, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So. It actually tells you the build time and the execution time and the render time. So, for debugging stuff, I, you know, we go through there. Um, there's a footer and there's empty text. That's pretty self-explanatory. The new cool thing about the theme stuff here is there's no more theme wizard, right? Well, that's kind of a interesting interface to deal with. Um, you can click on th what's that? Uh, if there's no results, right, if there's no results, you'll display that text as the empty text. Um, so now if we click on theme information, you can see that it gives us four different types, uh, four different things, I guess, elements that you could theme, okay? So we can theme the display output, okay, we could, we could theme the style output, which for this is grid, right, we could theme the row style output, which is fields, or we can theme the actual field level content. So in terms of, it really depends on what you want to theme, how, like what parts of the view you want to theme, but you can essentially theme every single aspect of it. So um, the row style output would allow you to theme this entire, it's not really a row because they're horizontal, but this particular element, you could wrap items around it or div tags around it or HTML around it. Um, Frame around it or right, right. Uh, field content, you can actually manipulate the data that's output from the field. Okay, so say we wanted to output the image in some other way. You wouldn't really want to do that with image because you have image cache and you can do a lot of cool stuff without using it. But there may be circumstances where you need to use that and this is, this will give you basically direct access to the data that's being returned for that, for each particular field. Okay. Uh, the style output would be, for this one, it's grid. Um, so we could change the way that the grid output is put together, or we could change that the way the entire wrapper for the entire view is put together by the, the display output. And what it does is it tells us which of the template files is our active template file. Okay, so if we, essentially what we can do is we can find this template file, I'm doing is bringing up um, the entire site files in TextMate. Um, so let's search for the template that we saw there. Okay, so we get a match. So this is the template file that's outputting uh, the display output. Okay, so we can go through here and see what variables are being printed and all, all of this stuff. Okay, oh, wait, you guys can't see this, sorry. I just forget. <laughs> Um, which one is it? It's, is that better? Okay, but I'm going to increase the font too. There. Is that better? Okay. So this is the template file for the, the display output. Probably is a lot of gibberish. Um, what I would recommend doing is just going through and printing out each of the variables uh, using like print R, um, or if you have the devel module, you can use the function DSM. Um, so if I wanted to inspect the CSS name variable, I could do DSM, right? And, and then if I had the devel module installed, which I would highly recommend because it gives you a really cool debugging interface for your variables, um, if you type that in, save it it'll actually allow you to see, it'll give you a, a new message that you can debug the variables. Um, if you don't have devel installed, you can use print r, which will tell you what the variable type is and the value of the variable. If it's an array, it'll list every element of the array. Um, so, yeah. So, since I have devel installed, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do... Just for sake of argument.
Okay, is he back? Okay. We're outside the issue. Yeah, you got it. You're in the Thank you. Um, right, so I have to enclose my PHP code in PHP. Uh, So since it's a simple variable, uh, it prints out like that. If it's a if it's an object or a class or uh, like an array, it'll give you like a breakdown. You can like drill into each of the elements and see the sub elements. Um, it uses the Crumo library for PHP. If, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. So if we say we want to modify the template, we could we could use this sort of um, this approach to figuring out what's available to us and. Uh, Take it from there. Okay, I'm not going to get too too involved with the theming because that's sort of another deal for another day. Um, what is cool though is that if you if you can see it, it suggests multiple templates to use. So say we have another view that also has um, the grid output. We don't want to override that view's grid output as well. We can actually drill down to the more specific grid output template for our for this particular view. Okay, and so from top to bottom it gives you the most specific template name to use. Um, if you're having trouble with it, I found that if you copy the original template file into your theme directory and copy, uh, make a copy of that and then rename it to the, the new one so you actually have two template files in your theme directory. One is the original one which would be like views-view and one would be your modified one with uh, this name, it will pick that up better. Sometimes it doesn't recognize it if you don't have the original template file in your, in your theme folder. Um, but if you're running into issues with that, there's theme information online, you guys can look that up. Where does it park the original, when you install it, where does it put those theme files initially? Those are actually now, with Drupal 6, those template files can be found in the module folders. Um, previously, template files weren't in module folders, those were only in the theme. Um, that's a new addition with the whole theme system for Drupal 6. Um, so I would definitely suggest, I don't know what kind of uh, interface you know, text editors you guys use, but something that allows you to search through all your files really easily to find different files, um, it saves a lot of time. So like with TextMate, I just hit Command T and I can type in any file name and it will find it and I can open it up. So I think um, Eclipse allows you to do something like that, that's a free editor. Um, Komodo, I'm not really sure if it does or not. Uh, okay, so let's get out of code and let's go back here. Uh, basically, you can tell views to rescan the template files and it'll tell you if it finds your overridden template file. Um, so you know it'll, it'll put it in bold. Okay, so if we overrode the template with this one, it would be, um, it would light up in bold if views found it. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We've covered a lot of the interface, but not all of it yet. Um, you guys want to take a quick break, or do you guys want to keep going with stuff? Or why would you rescan those? Uh, you'd rescan it, say, if you added a new template file to override the default. Uh, it would clear the cache out, and then it would recognize the new template files there. Yeah. So with Drupal six, there's a lot of uh, template file caching that goes on, so that every page load, it's not looking to see what available template files there are. It actually holds a list of the ones that there are. And the normal third cache wouldn't see this. It would, but this is sort of a, a way that you can do it without leaving the interface. Yeah, sort of a convenience thing. Okay. Uh, do these template files sort of replace plugins? No. Uh, okay, so Carrie asked if uh, the template files replace plugins, and that, the answer is not really because you can add plugins as well um, to add your own display types. And on my blog post, that's what I listed at the very bottom, was other modules that provide new display types. Um, one of them was the, the calendar module. It now integrates completely with views. So it provides new calendar style displays, um, or styles, right, display types. Um, which will represent calendars and such. Um, the other one is uh, the slideshow module, the uh, view slideshow, which is kind of cool. It'll hide the results, or you can set it so that it does different types of slideshows with your results. Um, we can load that up later if you want, but I have a link to it so you guys can check it out. There's a full demo video for that and everything. So, um, Okay, is there any questions about what we've gone over so far? Any questions about you know, how to use this thing or what we're doing? And a couple people came in a little late. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and.
build out a photo gallery. Yeah, go ahead. Um, real quick, um, with these two, do they have the kit still? Or no? Oh, the bonus pack? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, since there's a lot of the elements from the bonus pack in it. Um, but I'm pretty sure they'll be upgrading bonus packs so that there's some additional stuff. Um, what he's talking about is the, the bonus pack module, which for views one, there's a bonus pack module which gave you new display types like the grid or uh, other different types of displays and, and some other, other cool stuff. I'm, I didn't really use it too much, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was talking about because like, I've written modules like the use that as a prototype and the right. old views to do my own display types. Right. Yeah, well, maybe you could cover this, but um, with with photo management, is like this seems to be doing, right. um, the one of the key needs that I've run across is being able to distribute a number of photos to a number of different people. Um, right. You might have a rule which said that if you're in the photo, you get access to it, and and so how this, you know. Let's say you allow you to tag the photos or, or read additional data with or metadata attached to the photo. Right, okay, so. Control or permission. Right, so the question is about permissioning. Um, and even more generally about node permissions, right? So you can control which users have access to which nodes or which photos that are attached to those nodes. Um, there's a number of different solutions. One of the main ones is taxonomy, um, taxonomy access control. That's one of them. There's there's other things you can search online for, like node access modules. Um, and views will adhere to any node access settings you have on your website. So if you're using organic groups and you have access control related to the groups that people are in or um, related to taxonomy access, say we categorize nodes um, in specific categories based on who we want to grant access to them, uh, views will adhere to all of those access permissions um, by default. So. You cannot actually override that with views. Views will, if someone doesn't have access to view this photo, and someone else does, that photo will not show up for the person that can't see it, and it will show up for the person that can't see it. Views will integrate with that. Does that answer your question a little bit? Well, I guess you're, you're asking more specifically how to do it. Where would I put that information? Basically, who's in the photo? A simple system would be if you're in the photo, you get access. So right. Tag the photos with who's in the photo, and then. If you're in the photo, you can get to see your photos here. Right. Um, that's actually a question probably for another session. Okay. Um, but I would guide you to look for node access. If you go on Drupal's website or you go on Google, search for Drupal node access modules or node access um, systems. And maybe I can, if you guys want to, if you want to start a thread on the group, we can actually post up some recommendations so um, as well. One photo per node or something like that? Oh, right. So the way we're doing it now is the, f the node has a field called photo and you can upload photos to a node. And then uh, using taxonomy access or such, you could um, you know, limit access based on the category that the node is in. Go ahead. Um, it's another discussion, but how does this thing play with Panels 2? Um, panels 2 for Drupal 6 is not complete yet, um, but it will play very nicely, very nicely. You can actually set which views have, have access, um, which views you can embed in the panels. Um, you can also actually create a new panel display type. So if you only want to show um, panel display types being available to panels, you can limit that. It's more for like, and you, for say you're building a website with lots of contributors and you want to limit what people can add. Um, you can limit what views are actually able to be added into the panels. Panels contexts all work and it's going to be awesome. Um, and that is more in reference to like overriding the taxonomy term page so that for each taxonomy term page, the taxonomy term ID gets passed into the view so it only shows uh, elements from that taxonomy term. And that's actually a good segue into the arguments. But anything else? Isn't that um, confusing to get the views and then have the panels on top of the user? It's just, just another way of limiting the kind of controlling. Um, panels is a level on top of you. Right. So Mike, Mike answered that perfectly. So, just so I can repeat for the audio. Um, so the question is, how does views and panels really work together, and what's sort of their role, I guess? And uh, Mike's answer was that views creates lists of content, and that's that's its only job is to create lists of content on your website. Now you can create lists of taxonomy terms or users, but the idea behind it is that you're creating a list of 
dynamic elements on your website. Okay, panels allows you to create different pages or different different um, sections to a particular page, where you can then insert those views into the, those sections of the page. Another way of putting it, at least one of the words for me, is that panels provides a container just like blocks provide a container or right. pages provide a container. So it, it's all just different types of containers. I mean, a panel page is essentially like putting a bunch of blocks all over the page so you don't have to write some code to do it. Okay. Um, so I said I'd come back to this. Um, items per page. If we go down here and we change the offset, what that does is it, it changes which node we begin our lists at. Okay, so uh, offset zero means that we start from the very beginning of the list and that's the, the nodes that we list. If we change the offset to something like three, um, you'll notice that for our, let's see, let's go to this one because we only have three nodes in this view, remember. Um, let's preview it. Let's see, there's no nodes, right? Because we're starting from the third, which is actually the fourth element, which would be zero, one, two. There's our first three nodes, and then the fourth one's gone. Okay, so if I go ahead and change this back to offset at one, then we have two nodes. Okay, so we chopped off that first one, which is zero. Um, this is really cool because Afterwards, I'll get into this, you can actually add new attachments to the, to the view. So um, say you wanted to feature one photo on top of the rest and you wanted it to be a lot bigger. You could create an attachment, which is actually a separate view, but it's displayed above another view. And you could use the offset so that the first one is offset zero. And then the, the view with the rest of the list of the photos is offset one. So you can feature one photo on top and then have multiple, uh, the rest of the photos below it. Okay, it kind of went fast, but everybody kind of understands how the offset stuff works. Um, so let's go ahead and actually do that, because I think it's kind of a really cool and helpful tip that um, you probably won't read online or anything. Um, so right now I have a display here, and I've changed this, def this display so that we only display two items per page, and we offset it at the first one, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new display called Attachment which we can then attach to any of the other views that we have, uh, any of the other displays that we have for this particular view. Okay, so I'm going to add that display. I'm going to change its name to um, Featured Photo Attachment. Okay, uh, it didn't update the name here, but if I save it and I come back and edit the view later, it'll update. Uh, let's see, so now I want to change the items to display. Now this is really important. I have the default set to 2 and offset 1. I want to override this for this particular attachment. Okay, so I need to set it to 0. And I want to limit it to only 1. So we only want to show the first photo. Okay. Now we can attach, let's see, we want to position it before and we want to attach it to this view, this display, sorry. Okay. So now we have all three of our results again, right? Um, we have two headers because the headers are the same, so let me remove the headers. So for the, our attachment, our header is going to be nothing, just because we don't really need it. And I'll update the default display. So there, we have our attachment, which is on top, and then we have the list of the other nodes, which is below it. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually override the way that the fields are displayed for the featured attachment. Let's override that, okay? And we want to use the image format, which is our large format, right? And I'm going to hit update. Okay. Another cool thing, like say we wanted to have the title of the featured one, we can add that field additionally or as well. So let's go ahead and go to the node group and we'll add the title and hit add. And we're not going to give the label for the title because we know it's a title. So I'll delete that. And I'm going to link this to its node. And I'm going to hit update. So there's the title. Um, so like we did before with the sort criteria, I can rearrange those so that the title's on top. And hit update. And then we go down, and there it is. So does the uh, pager respect that? Like, uh, the pager will be per display. 
Okay. Right. So if, let's let's go ahead and check that out. Actually, as an example. So let's go back to this view display, um, and we'll use a pager. And let's see, because the elements there's no more than two. Let's go ahead and limit it to one, so that we have a pager. Right. Um, and let's update the defaults. So it's really cool for like news websites. Say you want to feature one article on the homepage, you know you can take the title and the, the teaser text from that node, from that featured one, and display that above like a list of the titles from the rest of the, the list. Um, any questions? Okay, um, let's take a quick like five minute break. Let me get some water, and then um, we can show some exposed filters and such. Okay.